Dooley Noted, 1-9-2015. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley. I'm here at Catalyst Sports at Immaculate Dissection Seminars. And Frank, the amazing Frank, has beautiful, beautiful abs anyway, but he also has abs painted on by the great Danny Quirk. As you can see here, the rectus abdominis has tendinous intersections that help give it this six pack appearance. It has an adherence to something called the rectus sheaths. As you can see here, Frank has the obliques uh, depicted here and they become tendinous or flat, aponeurotic as they cross in front of and behind the rectus abdominis. This is a particularly important clinical correlation in patients that have something called diastasis recti, where the rectus muscles will actually separate from one another. A lot of the problems with uh, the treatments of diastasis recti is people focus on the rectus abdominis. They focus on shortening those muscles as if they're weak. And that's actually not the case. Where you see here this white line called the linea alba goes from xiphoid down to pubic symphysis, and it's the attachment site for the abdominal musculature, including rectus abdominis, the obliques, and the transversus abdominis. Well, the transversus abdominis and the obliques passing in front of and behind the rectus insert onto this linea alba, helping to buttress the rectus abdominis and increase all the firing patterns to work in synergy to build intra-abdominal pressure, especially in exhalation. So one of the best things you can do for diastasis recti is code breathing. Right? So let's put you in a flat back position. So instead of doing crunches, which are probably not appropriate, you want to actually work these muscles with breathing. So we go ahead and bend your knees up. If you can walk on inwards, so we can really see Frank here. Frank, is it okay if I just roll this down just slightly? Okay, great. What we want to do in case of diastasis is have someone bend the knees, have them gently pull the ribs down towards the hips. Okay, let's start with the feet planted. And what you want to do is assess if they can actually expand laterally on the breath. And many people that have a lack of extensibility of the obliques, what they'll have is a problem being able to pull this outwards on the inhalation. Frank's isn't too terrible, but in someone with diastasis or spreading between the rectus muscles, they'll have a lot of trouble here trying to expand laterally. They'll expand really well anterior to posteriorly, which is part of the problem. As you separate the rectus abdominis muscles from each other, it'll expand the linea alba and further disin or really inhibit the musculature here on the lateral wall. So what you can do is you can cue the person to have a ribs down position, neck long to take the erector spinae out the game and have them push into the lateral sides of the hands. You'll have them prolong the exhalation since the oblique muscles are exhalation muscles. Really push into my hands out to the side and exhale. Nice long exhale, trying to make the exhale twice as long as the inhale. After they get pretty good at this, what you can have them do is lift one leg up. Again, neck long, chin tucked, chest broad, ribs down, and breathe into my hands on the sides. And after they get pretty good at that, you'll have them lift both legs up. This is the hardest part usually for people with diastasis where you'll see the most amount of diastasis uh, press outwards. This is the most demanding position. If this is too demanding, you can put a ball or a chair underneath the feet. We refer to this as supine 90-90 breathing, meaning the hips are at 90 degrees and the knees are at 90 degrees. On your next inhale, go ahead and take one foot and put it down and then follow with the opposite. Fantastic. So that's a regression and progression you can use for patients with diastasis recti. Remember not just to focus on shortening these muscles. It'll never work. You'll never reduce the diastasis. You have to focus on the lateral aspect since these muscles, the obliques and the transversus abdominis form the rectus sheaths that actually help keep the rectus abdominis in its place. The anterior rectus sheath binds to those tendinous intersections that give you that six pack appearance. So, if you want rectus to stay in place, you have to have the obliques participating upon breathing. Dr. Kathy Dooley. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it.